99% of photographers ignore the most important question that they can ask themselves. How do I grab and hold the attention of anyone viewing my images? And in most cases, we'll wrongly assume that it's our composition that needs work. But more likely than not, it's actually the stories that we're telling that just aren't very compelling. So how do we tell better stories? There are a few techniques that professionals use to tell better stories. And the best way that me and you can practice these is by shooting in black and white. Black and white removes any color distraction, allowing us to focus on the other elements of the image, such as storytelling. And so today we're gonna to talk about the most overlooked aspects of storytelling within photography. And we're gonna use some of the images I shot at the Queen's funeral as reference images. So we're both on the same page as to what I'm talking about. Details are so, so overlooked. And you can really tell who are the photographers who are excellent, who get it and the photographers who don't. And so what, what actually are details and why do we wanna capture them? Details add texture, they add feeling, they add nuance to any of the stories that you're trying to tell. And why that's important is that as humans, we go around the world touching things, interacting with things, picking things up, picking them down. That's how we change the world around us. And so it's such a vital sense for all of us. And sharing details of the environment allows you, the viewer of the image, to really understand what it feels like to to be in this environment. We're able to help viewers recognize their own movement patterns and their own interaction with the world, as well as potentially creating a relatable story for someone else and how others interact with the world. And so let's take this beautiful image of some hands. And I was standing opposite this couple and I noticed that they were interacting with each other. This moment just struck me as being so beautiful because the sense of holding someone's hand, there's just a beautiful connection and comfort that comes with that. And this intimacy between two people, is something that pretty much every single one of us wants to feel at some point. And so this detail was something that I felt like I had to capture. And so now we move on to this single flower that someone has clearly placed in the fence. And so the reason why this is a really good detail is because you can see the, the detail and the texture of the flower. So we know what it feels like to hold a flower. And so we know the feeling of what it must have been like to place that there. And that detail, beautiful, I love it. Thank you so much for the coffee, Hannah, Greg, and Taylor. All of you are absolute superstars. And if you wanna support the channel, link down below. Emotion is always confused by photographers, but it's actually quite simple. Firstly, it's not a hot girl staring straight down the barrel of the camera thinking, I'm gonna get these photos for free, aren't I? That is not emotion. Emotion is creating an image that is relatable to the viewer. It's our job as photographers to notice these very human moments, these very human interactions around us, to capture them and to put them in images. And there's really three ways that we can capture emotion in a photo. Number one, facial expressions. Number two, body language. Number three, the interaction between people. And I've actually got a video in the works about a professional's guide to capturing emotion. So if this is something that you're interested in, hit subscribe. And so I think that most people understand the facial expressions. If someone's super sad, as you can see here, it's quite easy to tell what the emotion is. But as we move into this, body language is so, so interesting. So we've got this girl who, she doesn't really have a facial expression, perhaps contemplation, but the way how she's kind of looking down at her hands, she's not feeling very confident, she's not feeling energetic and outgoing, that is telling us a story. And in another example of body language, this one is more of like a photographer's toy. This gentleman, the security guard, was standing there very promptly, very upright, but as he was walking, he looked down for a split second, and that's when I chose to take a photo. And in this image, he looks like he is sad. And we can play with this as photographers. We're able to see moments, and we're able to tell a different story to perhaps what actually happened. And then finally, we're onto the interactions between people. And this image really stands out to me because everyone knows the feeling of when you're a small kid and you're all wrapped up, and you've got your mom, your dad, a guardian looking after you and you just feel so safe. And sometimes, sometimes that's a feeling that we still want now. And that's what makes a photo like this so relatable and which stirs up a bit of emotion. Scale is either completely irrelevant and insignificant or an absolutely vital tool to telling a story. And so we've got to consider, is this thing that we want to photograph either particularly big or particularly small? And usually people use comparison as the way that they can communicate, yo, this thing, could be a person, you know how big a person roughly is, but if you make them look really small compared to a mountain range, 
all of a sudden, they look tiny and this mountain range looks absolutely humongous. But another technique that we can use to show scale is to try and fill the frame entirely. And so I've used it in a few images here. And what this does is it gives the impression that whatever you're trying to showcase is all encompassing, it's never ending. From the edge to the opposite edge, there is the same subject. And that introduces the idea of repetition, that this can go on indefinitely. And this is a great way to, especially at big events like this, to make it seem like, oh my God, there is an insurmountable amount of people or flowers in this location. When trying to set the scene, there are three vital elements that you need to consider. And most photographers can kind of do two of them, but often miss out the last one. So what are they? Number one, who are the characters? Number two, where is the location? And number three, what is the event that draws these people here? And what makes this scene interesting? And when trying to set the scene, it is so important that you know the rules that you are breaking because you're able to imply lots of these things. You can imply that someone was once here. You can imply the questions like, oh, I don't know what the event is, why everyone is here. But you must know what rule you are trying to break for it to then be interesting to the viewer. And so in this example, We've got the characters of a bunch of different people all climbing up over this wall. And their location, it looks kind of royal because who has a fancy stone wall other than the very, very wealthy? And so in this, if you don't know the context of, oh, they're climbing over the wall to see the, the new king, then that implies a question. And so in this image, we've got the characters who all act as a collective. When you've got a bunch of different people where no one is the standout, they're all acting as a collective. And so the location, the path, it's the queue. And the event is that they are there queuing. And that really helps set the scene of what it was like to actually queue for the Queen's Lying Estate. And so by using detail, emotion, setting the scene and scale, you are able to really tell a compelling story. And if you liked any of the images that I showed you today, then click on this video over here, I think it's this side, um, to watch the Queen's funeral video in full. And on that note, peace.